Hi guys, today I want to talk about bridesmaids and groomsmen, a uh, wedding party, and why you don't need to have one, especially if you feel like you can't afford one or you just don't want to spend that much money on, on one. Um, pretty much like they're not necessary and I'm going to tell you how to have a wedding without a wedding party. My name is Brittany from WayfaringWeddings.com. I'm currently planning my own wedding and trying to make it budget friendly and eco-friendly, writing about it on my blog and making YouTube videos about it. So if this video is helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to my channel. So yeah, first of all, you don't, you absolutely don't need to have a wedding party or if you're going to have a wedding party, you don't have to do it in this traditional or expected kind of way. And what I mean by that is you could have a mixed gendered wedding party if you want. You can have some of your best guy friends or your brothers be standing with you on your side as your bridesmaids, whatever you want to call them, your grooms, your bridesmen. Um, you could have a mixed age bridal party if you wanted to do that, if you have like aunties or your grandma you want them in your bridal party like who's to say that we have to have a group of young women around the same age as us and only women in our bridal party you really can do whatever you want you can mix this up um, do what suits you best and if that means not having a bridal party at all great do that uh, some of the reasons to not have a bridal party are, of course, the expenses. Um, so you will have heard lots of stories and probably maybe have experienced this for yourself where you're put in the position of either attending a wedding as a bridesmaid and spending close to sometimes $1,000 when all is said and done in terms of the bachelorette party, the gifts that you give the bride, um, the dress and the shoes and like just everything that goes into being a bridesmaid, you can spend a lot of money. And then if you have several weddings within one or two years, you can absolutely go broke being a bridesmaid. So you're actually doing your friends a favor by deciding not to have a bridal party in many respects. I've heard wedding advice given to bridesmaids who were having a hard time spent like affording weddings. Um, I've heard like terrible advice from people online that was like, don't upset the bride, don't tell her that you can't afford this. And I totally disagree with the sentiment. I, I think if you can't afford something you have to be really honest you have to tell the bride that like this is too much for me you know like i'm going into debt for you, for your wedding of course respectfully and nicely and hopefully your friend can understand where you're coming from i it just it it makes me like ill the that people are going into debt for weddings when really they should be this occasion that celebrates love and hope and joy and it's just really ironic that we're put in these really harsh positions sometimes as brides and as bridesmaids and we shouldn't be putting each other in these positions there should always be like a feeling that you can you can opt out if you need to we're all in different financial situations and that nobody should feel kind of like tied to being in a wedding or having to pay for things um, for a wedding your own or somebody else or a friend of yours um, it's just the financial expectations and obligations are really unfair. Don't feel bad for not having a bridal party, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And this comes from someone who has been a bridesmaid many times and who has loved being a bridesmaid and like, and I'm not knocking it at all. It's just that it's gotten out of control, I think. I don't feel like people should have to feel this pressure on either side to um, spend all of this money to be in a wedding or to put their friends in that position. Um, it's just like, it's. I think it's asking too much, to be honest. Often when you ask somebody to be your bridesmaid, they're also not going to say no to you because they love you and they want you to be happy. So it's, it's hard because you're put in this position where you need to be spending a lot of money um, because you just like couldn't say no to your best friend. Um, I have to say like, side note, this has not been the case with me and my friends. My friends um, are amazing and have never put me in the position of having to spend lots of money on their weddings. Uh, but I know that this has caused a lot of drama and stress for so many people and I just think it's really, really unnecessary. Also, I don't know about you guys, but I just feel like some weirdness in terms of picking out outfits, I guess especially for bridal parties, like picking out uh, colors and hairstyles and dresses for grown women like in their 30s like dressing up dressing them up 
<laughs> um, I, I just, there's something like that I feel kind of weird about doing that. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one here, but that's another reason why I probably won't be having any kind of bridal party. So here's how to have a wedding without a bridal party or groomsmen or a wedding party. So step one is to make your intentions clear from the beginning. Let all of your friends and family know that you're not gonna be having a wedding party and not to expect to see a wedding party or to be asked to be in a wedding party. I think if everybody knows this from the beginning that they'll just accept it and move on. If you do experience pushback, just explain to people that it's just not in your budget or maybe it's just not like part of your it's not in your wedding vision to do that and just stay strong in your um in your decision and let people know you're not you're not going to do it now of course this doesn't mean that people can't get ready with you right you can still have your friends get ready with you the day the morning of your wedding together um, they don't have to be in this exclusive club and all wearing the same outfit in order to get ready with you and drink champagne uh, I think you should definitely still do this and you could even get ready with your partner if you want to. Um, just all of these rules, kind of throw them out the window and do what you want to do on the morning of your wedding with the people you want to do it with. If you still want to make certain people feel special, even though they're not involved, like part of an official wedding party, you can um, like give them a shout out at the ceremony or the reception or have your DJ or officiant do this, like name people by name and say thank you to special people in your life or put their names in the program if you're gonna have printed programs. Um, or you could involve them in the ceremony somehow, like ask them to do readings or um, ask them to give a toast later in the night. You could have them be part of the hand fasting ceremony. If you're gonna do a hand fasting ceremony, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. <laughs> or um, check out, I have a blog post on hand fasting ceremonies, I'll link below. Um, but there's all kinds of like other ways that you can involve people who you love that don't um, require them being like an official member of an official wedding party. Even like giving them matching boutonnieres or bouquets, but again, like that's starting to get into you having to spend money, which you're trying to avoid. So maybe that's not the best option, uh, but there are other ways of making them feel special. And then for the wedding ceremony itself, you can still have a processional if you want, even though you don't have a wedding party. So, I mean, that could take many different forms. You could walk in by yourself. You can walk in with your partner. You could still walk in with your father, your mom and dad, um, like, your profession your processional doesn't have to be uh, like this long thing with many bridesmaids and groomsmen that you've seen a million times you can do it differently you can reimagine this however you want and whether that means like just you and your partner walking in simple or actually having each of you walk in separately with people other people you care about it just i guess what i'm trying to say is it doesn't have to be uh, one way you can you can do what you want for your processional and recessional I wanted to make this video today guys because I think I've just seen so many things on wedding forums and in blog posts and things where we I feel like people are still so stuck in a certain way of thinking in terms of how a wedding has to be how a wedding ceremony with bridesmaids and groomsmen has to be and I have really creative friends whose weddings I've been to who have really like changed this up and questioned all of these kind of rules and I really love that and I think um, I just want to impart this in some way on the internet that you can do these things too you can change things up and you don't like you don't have to have a bridesmaid or any kind of wedding tradition that doesn't sit well with you or it's just like too expensive and unnecessary so good luck everybody if this was helpful for you please like it and subscribe to my channel for more wedding discussions just like this